Python, JavaScript, TypeScript, Next.js, Vue, MongoDB, Postgres, MySQL, Azure, AWS. Does it matter? Does it matter which you use? Well, kind of, but maybe not in the way that you'd expect. In this video, I'm going to walk you through the tech stack that I use to get launch ready SaaS in days rather than months. Over the past four or five years, I've built so many SaaS platforms. I've worked with startups that are worth millions. I've worked with small bootstrapped SaaS founders, a real range. But now I use the same tech stack with all of them. It used to take me months playing with different technologies, trying to figure out what the best things to use together were. And now I can just build a SaaS literally in a day with authentication, databases, payments, great design. I can build it quickly. And that's super, super important. And that's because I find a tech stack that works for me. It's a tech stack that can scale. It's easy for me to work with and I can move really quickly with it. I got there through literally thousands of hours of debugging, wondering why I'm running into a certain problem, spending hours and hours trying to solve that problem. And then if it came to be a technology problem, or this was something that cropped up time and time again, then I'd swap it out for a new technology. And along the way, I learned that it's simply about choosing tools that work together well, allow you to move quickly, and ultimately are really a pleasure to work with. Now, if you're a developer, maybe you're wondering, what other tech do I need to learn before I get started? And I've been there. I've spent literally months learning new technologies, playing around with different things to find something that works. Fortunately though, you can probably get started with what you already know. If you're a non-technical founder, you're probably wondering which developer do I need to get? What do they need to know? What technologies do they need to be able to use? I see this all the time. And fortunately, the answer is far simpler than you think. You don't need to be looking at an AWS bill for thousands of dollars from the very outset. In any case, the solution is to find a tech stack that works for you allows you to build fast and won't prohibit you from scaling further down the line. The most important thing to remember is that there is no one correct tech stack. There's many different solutions here that can work. And that doesn't mean that there's a unique solution that is optimal for each business necessarily. My tech stack, I can build pretty much anything with. And that's one of the reasons that I love it. The fact that I know my way around that tech stack, like the back of my hand, is what allows me to move quickly, and deliver a solution that is great at the end of the day. It's not insanely expensive, it's really easy to get started with, and it scales. Now I'm going to run through the tech stack that I use, and at the very least, you'll get some ideas of technologies that maybe you can use in your own stack. So how I'm gonna break this down is firstly going through the foundation of how I build my applications, and then through the back end, and then into some of the more uh, kind of business focused services that I use. So at the very base of everything that I build is Next.js and Vercel. So Next.js is a React framework. I did use React very early on in my career, but I found that Next.js just had that really nice layer on top to give me some great features out of the box. It's very easy, quick to use. I just push code to GitHub and it's automatically deployed to Vercel where I can add domains and really monitor everything that I need to be monitoring. It's also super affordable. I'll go through the cost of everything in my stack later on in the video. Um, obviously, I use TypeScript. I did use JavaScript for longer than I care to admit, and one of my friends kept pushing me to use TypeScript, and eventually I did. It was transformative. My code is so much better now and so much easier to debug and understand what's going on. In terms of UI stuff, I use Shad CN for a lot of projects. I use Tailwind CSS. That's something that I just know and understand and love now. That really works for me. I also use Tailwind UI. It's a product that I bought like within my first few months of building software and I still use it to this day. It's just a really great library of components, templates and pieces of UI that I can just copy and paste into my code. I've also been using it a lot recently as kind of a reference point for AI to get it to ensure that it has good accessible design um, whilst also building things for me with functionality um, and giving me a good starting point. Now onto the back end. In terms of databases, I tend to use Postgres. I did use MongoDB for a long time, but I found that 
Postgres on Neon is a really good solution. It has database branching and some things that work really, really nicely for separating between preview and production environments. And um, it syncs really nicely with Vercel. That's been kind of a recent addition, but it really, really works well. Um, I use Prisma as my ORM. That's probably the thing that I'm likely to change next. Um, I'm interested in looking at Drizzle, but for now, Prisma is really good. It gives me a lot of type safety and really allows me to manage database migrations and just keeping my database under control as things change. Then better auth. This is actually the most recent addition to my stack. I did use auth.js. It was good for a period of time. And then when they switched from being next auth to auth.js, that's when things really started to break down for me. And I stopped using it at that point. I switched to clerk, really good. If you want to go quickly, it is a great solution, but you do have an element of platform lock-in. And when you want certain features, for example, the ability to impersonate users, the ability to have organizations with a large number of seats, then the pricing does get quite expensive for a project if you're just starting out. Better Auth is a solution that's become very popular in the last few months. It gives you all those possibilities. It allows you to do social sign-on. It allows you to have organizations, user impersonation, really everything that I could think that you'd want out of an authentication system. So I've loved using that. It does require a bit more work than Clerk, but ultimately it gives you control. For everything AI, I tend to use Vercel's AI SDK. I find that just to be an incredible tool. Um, I had a situation recently that I was really glad I used it, where an LLM provider, so Anthropic, had come out with a model which was better than OpenAI's model for a certain function that I was delivering within an application. And it was as simple as me just changing a few lines of code maybe, um, and it was all transferred over rather than having to rewrite all of my AI functions. Finally, and this one has been huge for me. When I first started to make applications that were dealing with a lot of automation, namely with AI, and I was getting these quite long running functions where the AI would take quite a long time to come back with a response. Sometimes it would just freeze and not give me back anything. And I was dealing with that in a really, really hacky way. I was kind of passing it around different API endpoints of my Next.js application. Now, ingest gives you the ability to run background tasks that are very procedural. So you break out your functions into different steps and it automatically retries steps if they fail. It also allows you to have much longer running functions. I know Vercel have improved the maximum duration of their serverless functions but I was finding a limitation a couple of years ago. Um, it was only, you're only allowed 30 seconds, whereas now I think it's about five minutes. But at that point in time, I could have these ingest background functions running and because they are broken up into steps, they still use your serverless functions in the background. This really allowed me to string more things together, have longer running processes and know that they were going to work. So whenever I have a slightly complex process now or it needs to happen in the background, I don't use Vercel cron jobs particularly often. I tend to use ingest and it works insanely well. I love that product so much. Definitely recommend having a look if you're building anything in AI. If you have functions that need to run and they need to be reliable, um, for example, you want to send a welcome email to a new customer and you need to make sure that that goes every time and maybe some of the APIs that you're using in that process aren't the most reliable, then ingest is definitely worth a look. When I want to do file storage, I typically turn to an AWS S3 bucket. For cell blob storage is pretty good as well. Although as you begin to scale and need more security, it can become a little bit limiting. If I need images and videos, I tend to always run to Cloudflare their stream and images products are really affordable, really good. They've got like resizing and compression and those things that are just so hard to build yourself, they make it easy out of the box. So, so yeah, I tend to use them for that kind of stuff. And finally the business layer. So for payments, I always try and use Stripe. I'm sure there's other providers out there. I'm sure they might be a little bit cheaper, but Stripe documentation, their pre-built checkout flows, account management portal. These are things that I use all the time. You get really familiar with them 
they're really good, really reliable, and so far so good for me on Stripe. And finally, for sending emails, I always use Resend. It's just really simple API-based email sending. It's perfect for transactional emails. You can send emails on there using React email, so you can get really, really good looking emails without writing out all the HTML and CSS that you often have to do if you want to send pretty emails. In terms of cost, outside of hobby projects, for sale is $20 per seat per month. So if you've got a fairly sizable team, it can get quite expensive, but the amount of speed that I think you gain using Vercel versus how much you're going to save when you think about how much you're paying those people already, I think it's a worthwhile investment. Neon, I think you can get started from around $19 per month, and then that cost goes up as you scale and as your database gets bigger. Stripe, typically around 3% is what I always think, so 3% of all the money that you process through it. Uh, better auth is free it's open source and ingest um, have a really really good free tier you can go quite a long way on their free tier i think if you're using it for a truly business critical process as you should be then you're probably charging a decent amount of money for that and their pricing bearing that in mind super super reasonable so that's my stack i hope there's something maybe new in there or maybe it's exactly the same as what you're already using then you know I hope you enjoy that just as much as I do. Um, I love this stack, it works for pretty much everything for me. Now and again, I have to bring in other technologies to deliver certain features, but really at the core of everything that I build is those technologies that I've mentioned. So that's how I build applications in days, not months. And if you'd like me to go into any more detail about any of them, please just drop a comment and I'm happy to make another video going into more detail about any of these technologies, why I love them, how I use them, and how you can get the same kind of value as I do out of them. See you next time. Cheers.